So this is again back to non-singularity. Okay. So if you if you uh, if you recall that if uh, p is a point in X, uh, which is an affine variety, okay. Uh, then uh, it is an affine variety in say an okay. then uh, p is uh, called non singular non singular uh, called a non singular point of x okay or we say x uh, is non singular at p okay we say x is non singular at p if uh, for uh, a given set of generators for let me not say I let me even say for some given set of generators f1 etc f l of the ideal of x okay uh, the rank of the jacobian matrix of f1 etc f l with respect to the variables x1 etc xn at the point p is equal to co-dimension of x which is actually which means uh, dimension of uh, the affine space the ambient space minus the dimension of x which means it is n minus dimension of x okay. So this was the definition of uh, non singular point a point of an affine variety is called a non-singular point or a smooth point uh, or we say that the variety is non-singular at that point okay. If for some given set of generators uh, for the ideal of the variety if you calculate this Jacobian uh, which is given by the partial derivatives uh, of all these with respect to uh, these variables that turns out to be the co-dimension of that turns out to be equal to the co-dimension of x okay and co-dimension is uh, the dimension of x taken away from the bigger space in which x sits which is affine space okay. So uh, and of course this uh, so you know this this is just this is just dou f 
j uh, by do x i at p, it is just this matrix okay and where of course the x i's are all affine coordinates of a n. So, uh, x 1 etcetera x n if you take they are coordinates on a n. So, so this is the definition of non-singularity, and then, uh, and then you know this generalizes. Uh, this can be used to generalize uh, 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 to say when a point on any variety is a non-singular point, uh, and the definition will be that well, uh, given any point on any variety, it always lies in an in an open set, which is an affine variety because any of any variety is covered by a finite union of open subsets which are isomorphic to affine varieties. So, you take the point uh, on the variety to also to be a point on an affine open set containing that variety and then it is then you define the point to be non-singular if it is non-singular as a point of that affine open set okay and in, so, uh, so you, in a way you know this non-singularity should not depend on the open set in which you are considering it. So, it should uh, so, you know the non-singularity or the smoothness at a point is a is a very uh, it is a local notion okay. Uh, you know when when you say a curve is smooth at a point it means actually uh, there is a sufficiently small neighborhood of the point where it is smooth okay. And similarly you know when you say a surface is smooth at a point it means there is a small sufficiently small <coughs> neighborhood of the surface where it has to be smooth. So, you see the smoothness at a point is something that is it's 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 not in fact uh, uh, in classical geometry you know uh, if something is smooth at a point then it's also smooth in a neighborhood of that point <coughs> okay and this is true also in algebraic geometry okay but it requires more competitive algebra it needs it, need, it requires more algebra to be to uh, to establish okay the fact is that uh, the uh, something being smooth at a point is something that spreads out to that a neighborhood of the point all right therefore uh, uh, so the moral of the story is that uh, uh, when you say x is non singular at a point it's some it it will it will happen not only at that point but also in a in an open set containing that point all right in a neighborhood of that point and uh, uh, and in in that sense you know you know that but you know any open set in the zariski topology is huge okay therefore what it will tell you is that the moment you have one smooth point okay then there is a huge open set there is a dense open set full of smooth points okay and this is what happens in in truth what happens is that the set of points which are singular points points which are not non singular that's only a small closed set okay and that means most of the points on an op, uh, all points on a huge open set they are also non singular they are all smooth points okay but anyway these are all geometric facts and uh, one needs uh, to have sufficient amount of competitive algebra to establish them all right so uh, so at so at the anyway at the level of this definition itself there are problems in the sense that you know uh, this variety x could sit in some other affine space and uh, if i change the affine space then the then the ideal uh, the ideal of x in the affine space will change okay and not only so that is one set one, that is one ambiguity and the other ambiguity is for this ideal I am taking some set of generators if I take another set of generators then uh, it may be different number of generators and this matrix changes but I am just saying that uh, so this is a condition on the rank of this matrix okay. So there are a lot of ambiguities in this definition why should this definition be a good definition because there are so many choices to be made I first of all I have to make a choice of embedding x uh, into some affine space namely I have to think of x as uh, uh, an irreducible closed subset of some affine space okay and uh, variety can be embedded in so many ways okay I can think of if the variety is a line of course I can think of it as a line in the plane or a line in the space in space in three space or even higher dimensional space. So, uh, uh, there is this ambiguity in embedding it in some an and then once you embed it uh, if you look at the ideal of x for that embedding that ideal uh, of course already depends on the embedding but then it could have different sets of generators okay the same ideal could have different sets of generators and they could 
and the number of generators in these sets could also be different okay therefore this jacobian matrix uh, you know which you which which is a jacobian of all these generators this matrix itself could change okay but then the definition is that you know whatever it is you calculate its rank if its rank is equal to co dimension then the point is a smooth point a non singular point so uh, it looks like this definition involves too many ambiguous things and uh, you know uh, uh, it might not be very consistent if you change the choices the various choices but that is not true the point is because this is got this has got to do with the uh, 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 this has got to do geometrically with trying to you know look at the tangent space uh, to uh, uh, the variety x at that point okay and that is the reason uh, it is because of that geometric reason that this definition actually works but then if you want to really uh, verify that one uses uh, of course you know you translate from geometry into commutative algebra and the necessity necessary commutative algebra is uh, given by the uh, given by the following theorem so here is a theorem the theorem is that uh, uh, a point uh, p of x uh, where uh, a point p of a variety x is a non singular if and only if the dimension of m p by m p square over k is a k vector space is equal to the dimension of O x x which is equal to dimension of x okay. So here is the uh, uh, this is the theorem all right where of course where uh, mp inside oxx is the unique maximal ideal okay so this is uh, basically this is due to zariski oscar zariski and it's a fundamental uh, result and here you know that the definition of non singularity we are using is this definition which is full of ambiguities okay this definition is full of ambiguities all right and whereas uh, this theorem gives a condition the condition is only on the local ring of the variety at that point and you know you can see immediately one thing because i am it's a condition on the local ring i can rest i can assume that this point is on an affine variety because i can go to an affine open subset of this variety and look which contains the given point okay so it really does not so you know it depends only on the local ring right and uh, if I and you know uh, the beautiful thing is that uh, uh, this is intrinsic to the variety see here nobody is bothered about uh, whether x is affine or quasi affine or if it is affine or quasi affine which affine space it is embedded inside. I mean all these things one is not bothered about the condition is completely in terms of things which are intrinsic to the variety okay and which do not depend on uh, you know the variety being seen as a subset uh, either irreducible closed or open subset of an irreducible closed uh, in some affine space or some projective space nobody is bothered about these things okay. So that is the reason why this theorem is, is very very important and uh, uh, so you know so the the proof is uh, interestingly the proof is uh, linear algebra and uh, uh, but actually <laughs> it is it has got to uh, it has got to do with geometry because what you are trying to do is you are actually you know uh, if you look at it geometry uh, geometrically <laughs> you are trying to uh, you know calculate the tangent space at the at, at the for the variety at that point okay and uh, uh, you are also trying to look at the normal space okay the space of vectors in the ambient space ambient tangent the, the tangent space at there at that point for the ambient uh, object and <coughs> and you are looking at the normal directions also okay. So uh, you know uh, so you know the, the, the idea is that uh, yeah oh yeah, yeah okay yeah that is very important yeah it should thank you should be OXP 
because all the time <laughs> I am used small x and then uh, yeah that is bad notation thank you. So this should be oxp uh, this should be oxp not small x right. So uh, so you know the uh, roughly geometrically this is what is happening what happens is that when you think of an object embedded inside a space okay then uh, and you take a point on that object okay then it will have uh, a tangent space okay and then the normal space uh, will be the normal vectors in the bigger space and the sum will add up to the dimension of the bigger space provided the point is smooth okay. So you know if I take a smooth surface in 3 space if I take a smooth surface in 3 space take a point on it and draw the tangent space I will get a tangent plane I will get a night I will get a neat plane 2 dimensional plane and I will get a unique normal to the surface which is given by the gradient okay if the surface is defined by a single equation it will be given by the gradient and then uh, uh, the, therefore the normal space will be 1 dimensional the tangent space will be 2 dimensional some of these spaces will be 3 dimensions which will be the ambient space in which the object is embedded. But however if you take a singular point this will not happen the singular point the tangent space itself may be uh, everything you may not have any normal vectors for example if you take the cone in 3 space and you take the vertex of the cone which is a non smooth point if you draw the tangent space then you will get the whole 3 space. So you will not be able to find at the vertex the, uh, the there are no normal vectors all vectors are tangent vectors there are no normal vectors so this kind of so if you uh, you see that uh, this happens because uh, that point is a singular point okay so if the if you have a smooth point what will happen is that uh, you will get a tangent space at that point which is equal to the dimension of the object and then the normal the normal space uh, which consists of vectors perpendicular to the tangent vectors okay that will give you a subspace of the tangent space of the point in the bigger space in which it is sitting okay such that the sum of these two spaces will be the whole tangent space okay and this will happen for smooth points it will not happen for non smooth points okay and actually it is that whole it is that calculation which is uh, being reflected here but it is being reflected using al algebra all right. So what you will do so let us do the following thing so without uh, without loss of generality. Uh, we assume x is affine okay and uh, why is this correct this is correct because uh, after all my definition of non singularity is uh, uh, it the non uh, your point p of a variety is called non singular if you uh, it is non singular as a point of an open sub subset which is affine because I have defined non singularity only for a point of an affine variety and any variety can be covered by affine varieties open subsets which are affine varieties. So without loss of generality I can assume that x is affine alright and uh, uh, and that means uh, and what I mean by this is you go to an open subset which is which is affine okay <coughs> by going to an open affine subset containing containing the point p okay and you know by going to an affine open set which contains the point p the local ring is not going to be changed because the local ring doesn't depend on uh, uh, whether you go to a smaller open set which contains the point or not okay so the conditions of the theorem are uh, uh, the both the both uh, uh, both the hypothesis and conclusions for uh, uh, the theorem both ways of the theorem they are not affected if you go to a, an affine open subset okay. So it is enough to uh, go to consider x affine okay so say uh, we are in this situation p is a point of x which is inside affine n space and now it is in now it is a uh, uh, affine variety means it is an irreducible closed uh, subset of an alright and then you know 
uh, now we will we'll, uh, uh, we'll do some calculations okay. So now first of all let p be the point lambda 1 etc lambda n okay p is a point of n space anyway so take its coordinates okay. So so the, the maximal ideal of p will be by the null stellar sets you know I mean uh, uh, the point p corresponds to a unique maximal ideal in uh, the affine coordinate ring of the affine space which is k x1 through xn this is the affine coordinate ring of a n right and here I will get a maximal ideal uh, which corresponds to this point by the null stellar sets that will be this maximal ideal uh, generated by the xi minus lambda i okay. So this is the maximal ideal that corresponds to this point alright and you see uh, what we will do is see you define you, you define this map k x1 through xn you define this map psi okay into kn so here is my map the map is very very simple take any polynomial norm lg in n variables simply ap apply I mean take its gradient uh, just take the gradient at p okay which means take dou g by dou x1 at p dou g by dou xn at p just do this. So just take the partial derivatives with respect to each of the variables in this order and then evaluate them at p okay. So uh, of course here when I say partial derivative it is a derivative that is in the formal sense uh, you know how to write the derivative of a polynomial uh, without having to get the derivative from calculus methods which involve epsilons and deltas and limiting processes okay. So we just use the standard rules for differentiation formal rules for differentiation of uh, variable and you write out these so each of these dou g by dou x i s are all polynomials again in the x size and then you just substitute the point p namely you substitute instead of each x i you substitute lambda i you will get some n tuple and that is this n tuple of k n okay. Now the point about this map psi is nice thing about this map psi is that it is k linear and surjective okay see the map psi is k linear because you know if instead of g if I replace g by g1 plus g2 okay then all these all the, you know all the partial differential operators they are all uh, uh, k linear I mean they are all linear and therefore uh, if I replace g by g1 plus g2 I will get a sum of tuples here and if I multiply this g by a constant that constant will come out there okay therefore it is k linear and it is surjective because you know if you take uh, you know if you uh, uh, you see if you take these generators of the maximal ideal okay if I take x1 minus lambda 1 alright for g then I will get 1 0 0 0 0 which is the first basis vector okay because if I differentiate this with respect to dou with x1 I will get 1 and substituting p has no effect it will still remain 1 if I differentiate with respect to other variables I will get 0. So, so if I take g equal to x1 minus lambda 1 I will get 1 0 0 0 if I take x2 minus lambda 2 instead of g I will get 0 1 0 etc. So in this way I will get a basis for kn okay and since the image contains a basis it is surjective okay so the moral of the story is that uh, psi is uh, k linear surjective surjective uh, psi of xj minus lambda j is equal to standard jth basis vector. So uh, so it is a linear subjective map alright and now the point is that uh, the kernel is exactly the square of this maximal ideal okay. So in other words uh, what I am saying is that psi induces uh, an isomorphism of uh, the n dimensional vector space k with m mod m, m p mod m p squared. So, mp mod mp squared is just the n dimensional vector space k. 
So, you see see if see if uh, 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 we take an element of m p squared ok then it is of the form you know it is going to be of the form sigma i some g i times x i so I know in, in fact I can put i comma j x i minus lambda i so I put g i j x i minus lambda i into x j minus lambda j uh, yeah that is right ok. You see what is an what is an uh, what is an element of the uh, square of an ideal it is a finite sum of products it is a finite sum of products where each 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 uh, term in the product is a product of two terms one from one each from the ideal ok. So, uh, so if I take an element of m p square it is a finite sum where each term has to be an element of this ideal but you know any element of this ideal will be generated by the x i minus lambda i uh, with the polynomial coefficients. So, it will look like this alright and now the point is you know <laughs> to this if I apply the operator dou by dou x l ok. Suppose I oper uh, apply the operator dou by dou x l alright then you know what will I get you see if you know if l is uh, so you know I have to differentiate product uh, of 3 terms alright and uh, 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 therefore I you use the product rule alright which also is valid in this case ok formally alright. Therefore you know see if so if you know if if L equal to I suppose L is I then what I will get is I will get uh, so so let me write it let me write it here. Uh, so what I will get is uh, well sigma i comma j uh, I will get dou i dou g i j by dou x l at p and then you know I, I apply p ok. So, this is you know this is the lth component of this map psi the, the map psi is apply all the operators all the partial differential operators and then substitute the point p. So, the lth component of this map that is this map followed by lth projection that is this map all right and what is it if you <laughs> apply the chain rule this is you know this, this will be xi minus lambda i xj minus lambda j at at p all right this is one term then the other term will uh, you know it will it will have gij at p and then i will have uh, uh, dou by dou xl uh, of xi minus lambda i into uh, at p into xj minus lambda j at p and then I will have one more term uh, I will have xi minus lambda i at p into dou by dou xl of xj minus lambda j at p ok this is what I will get alright and now if you look at it carefully this is going to vanish because you see the first term will vanish because I have these two fellows surviving if this is 0 then I am not worried ok. But even if this is not 0 if I substitute xi equal to lambda i or xj when I substitute p I have to put x i equal to lambda i and x j equal to lambda j. So, this is gone in this you know this will go and in this this will go. So, these terms will vanish these underlying terms. So, this is so this is so so this is actually 0 ok. 
So, the moral of the story is that if you take any element of mp squared this linear map will kill it ok. So, in other words uh, what it will tell you is that mp squared is contained in the kernel of psi ok, ok mp squared is con contained in the kernel of psi, but the more important thing is mp squared is exactly equal to the kernel of psi ok. Conversely let h belonging to m p be in uh, kernel of psi ok. Now h is in h is an element of m p, so h is h is actually given by sigma g i uh, uh, x i minus lambda i over i this is how an element of m the maximal ideal will look like it is just a combination of all the generators x i minus lambda is multiplied by polynomial coefficients the g i is our polynomial coefficients right this is how uh, maybe uh, ok this is g i and this is g i j so it should not they are different things right. So, so h looks like this alright and I am saying that I have taken my h to be in the kernel of psi so psi of h is 0 ok. So, psi of h what but what is psi of h? Psi of h is well I have to apply uh, uh, dou by uh, I have to partially differentiate this with respect to each variable and then substitute the point p then I should get 0 that is what it means to say that psi of h is 0 which is h is in the kernel of psi ok. I am trying to show that uh, <coughs> kernel psi is also contained in mp squared. So, I am trying to show kernel psi is equal to mp squared that is what I am trying to show ok. So, so psi of h is what if I differentiate this with respect to uh, 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 if I take psi of h psi of h equal to 0. So, this will tell you that you know if I take dou h by dou x l at p is 0 for all, for all l this is what it means ok and now write out write that out see dou h by dou x l at p 0 is equal to this, but what is see if I differentiate this I will get sigma over i ok I will get dou g i by dou x l at p into x i minus lambda i at p plus I will get uh, g i at p into dou by dou x l of x i minus lambda i at p this is what I get ok and what you must understand is that uh, uh, you see this is good this is 0 x i whenever x i minus lambda i comes if I substitute the point p it is going to vanish ok. So, this term is gone alright the and this term if you look at it if l is not equal to i this is 0. So, this term will be killed and this term will only survive when l is equal to i when l equal to i this is 1 ok and I will get g i of p. So, this crazy thing will tell you <laughs> that g l of p is 0 for all l this happens for every l. So, g l of p is 0, but that means what it means that the g l see if a polynomial vanishes at p then it is in the then it is precisely in the maximal ideal of p because m p is exactly the ideal of function polynomials which vanish at p. So, what this will tell you is that it will just tell you that that you know g l is in m p ok, but you know if g l if uh, and that is for all l. So, you know all these g i's are in the maximal ideal and these terms are also in the maximal ideal therefore, the product is in m squared and therefore, h is in m squared. So, this implies that h is equal to sigma g i into x i minus lambda i is in m p squared. So, all these things put together tell you that m p squared is exactly the kernel of psi ok why take h in m uh, no if h is not in m p I cannot write it in this form it has to be generated by the generators of m p 
so you can write h in this uh, h is in this form if and only if it is in mp because x i minus lambda i are the generators of mp a general a general h need not be like that any polynomial need not, need not be like that what i forgot to tell you <laughs> is that you see this psi is from this polynomial ring into this mind you every ideal is also a k subspace okay so this psi uh, the psi also gives you a linear map when restricted to a subspace so psi can also be restricted to mp and so in fact what i want to say is that psi restricted to mp itself is also k linear and surjective okay so i will come to that so you know uh, uh, note that uh, mp squared is a subspace it is a k subspace of mp which is also a k subspace subspace means sub vector, vector subspace and uh, there is this map psi into k n okay and in fact you see psi restricted to m p is also surjective because you know I have already told you that psi takes all the generators of m p into the standard basis. So psi restricted to m p is also surjective okay so psi restricted to m p uh, from m p to k n uh, okay so uh, so here of course I am looking at uh, as you said uh, because I am taking h in m p I am looking at the kernel of psi restricted to m p right. So so if you take psi restricted to m, m p uh, has uh, induces is a surjective and uh, uh, induces I mean it is surjective because the generators of mp give their images under psi give you the standard basis right and it induces a k linear isomorphism isomorphism from mp mod mp squared to kn and let me call this isomorphism as psi prime so you know the first uh, this simple linear algebra in this first step <coughs> gives the calculation that you know you take a point p uh, in affine space okay take the maximal ideal corresponding to the point then mp mod mp squared is just n dimensional affine space okay that is the calculation all right and you know if you look at it in fact in view of the, the in retrospect you know in view of the theorem that we are going to prove what you are saying is that every point of affine space is non singular okay because you know uh, if you take uh, uh, the local ring of affine space uh, at that point is just the polynomial ring localized at mp okay and its maximal ideal is generated by the image of mp in that localization and if you take and you are, what you are saying is that well if you take this quotient and localize okay uh, you will get mp mod mp squared at the local ring okay for the point in affine space and you are saying that uh, the dimension of that is equal to the dimension of affine space which is n. So you know <coughs> if you take x equal to a n you have got this condition you have got this condition and what what you are saying according to the theorem is that every affine space is smooth okay so the significance of this calculation is that affine space is smooth is non singular every point of affine space is non singular okay the affine spaces are smooth right so well anyway i need to go down to this uh, i need to go down to this subset okay so uh, uh, well see for that I, I do the following thing you see you have uh, uh, see p is in x and that is that that is the same as saying that i x uh, is, con uh, is contained in uh, mp okay this is again uh, you know uh, this is just applying uh, the 
the, the script i and the z functors to p and x right and using the Nernst sets. So you know p see p is in x so you are saying the subset p is subset of x okay you apply i to this so you will get i of the point p contains i of x okay but what is i of what is the ideal of the point the ideal of the point is exactly mp so mp contains ix okay so this is just applying the functor uh, i mean uh, it is it is uh, it is gotten by applying the uh, uh, getting the ideal of a subset okay and uh, uh, and of course the ideal of point is this maximal ideal okay mp and so you know <coughs> what will happen is that if you take if you take i x uh, so i x is inside m p right and in fact if you take i x plus uh, m p squared okay that will also be a sub of m p okay because m p squared is a sub of subspace of m p i x is also a sub of m p the sum of two subspaces is again a subspace all right and in fact I can even divide now by mp squared so I will get I divide by mp squared and I get this this is a subspace it is a subspace of this k vector space which is isomorphic by psi prime to kn okay alright and the beautiful thing is if I take the image of psi prime and image of this under psi prime you know what I will get what is the diamond of course it psi prime is an isomorphism and this is a subspace so the image of the subspace under psi prime will be a subspace of kn okay and that subspace what is the dimension of the subspace what is the dimension of uh, the image of a linear map it is simply you take uh, you, you simply take uh, a set of generators for the subspace okay and uh, apply the linear map the image uh, of a subspace is just given by taking the span of the image of images of the generators of the subspace okay. So if I want to take the if I if I take the image of if I want the image of this I have to just take a set of generators for this apply psi prime to that and take the span of that okay. In other words uh, of course instead of taking span of a set of vectors you can write those vectors in column form take the matrix and take the rank of that matrix because you know the rank of the matrix will give you the dimension of the image okay this is the standard rank and nullity theorem in uh, uh, you know uh, linear algebra so it is part of that theorem so you know but you see now you know if for i x if I take a set of generators f1 through f l of i x okay then those generators will also give me generators here okay and applying psi prime is actually calculating this uh, this Jacobian matrix because the actually what is happening is when you apply to each generator okay what you are doing is you are taking uh, you are going to get one you are going to get one row or one column of that uh, depending on the way you write it of the Jacobian matrix. So if you take the images of all these generators I am so I am just going to get the Jacobian matrix and its rank is precisely going to be the image of this okay that is the connection. So, so moral of the story is uh, dimension over k of i x plus m p squared by m p squared is equal to dimension over k of psi prime applied to that i x plus m p squared over m p squared okay and this is equal to rank of the Jacobian of dou f i by dou x j at p. Okay, where 
f1 f2 etc up to fl uh, are a set of generators for the ideal of x as here right so this is how you know the uh, you see now if you look at it like this it is very clear that no matter what set of generators I use instead of using f1 through fl suppose I use some g you know some h1 through h l prime another set of generators no matter how many generators they are I do not care okay. But in any case I am only going to get dimension of this subspace and that is the reason why this this the rank of this Jacobian does not depend on what your generators are okay you are always going to get only dimension of this subspace okay that is the reason why even for a fixed embedding for the ideal of the variety in the affine variety in the embedding into affine space even if you change the gen set of generators you are going to when you calculate the rank of the Jacobian of the generators with respect to the variables you are going to get only the same dimension I mean you are, you are going to get only the same rank because this is a dimension of one and only one subspace this subspace under this isomorphism okay fine. So um, all right now it is a now it is a matter of just uh, a little bit more of linear algebra all right. So what you do is so so let me uh, let me keep this statement here as it is and continue here it is only probably uh, a couple of lines more. So, what will happen is you have uh, 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 see what you should remember is you see m p mod m p squared uh, divided by i x plus m p squared mod m p squared okay. I have this this, this is a space and this is a subspace if I take the quotient my claim is that this is the same as m p mod m p square where this m p is a is a unique maximal in the local ring of x at p all right. So you see uh, we have we have uh, an isomorphism of k vector spaces in this way okay because uh, uh, how do you get the local ring you get the local ring uh, uh, because the the local ring of x at p is gotten how what you do is you take the affine coordinate ring of x and you localize it at the maximal ideal <coughs> that corresponds to uh, 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 the maximal ideal that corresponds to the point p inside x no this is the definition of the local this is how you get the local ring of an affine variety at a point you simply take the affine coordinate ring <coughs> of the variety and you localize at the maximal ideal that corresponds to that point the unique maximal ideal of the affine coordinate ring which corresponds to that point by the null schull and such okay but what is but what is ax it is just polynomial ring you go modulo the ideal i x and then uh, what is this maximal ideal this is just m p you localize at m p mod i x all right and because of this if you take uh, if you take this quotient m p mod m p squared i x plus m p squared mod m p squared this will be the, sma the same as small m p where small m p is the uh, uh, is the is a unique maximal ideal uh, in this because you see small m p is actually this you take the ideal uh, m p x dot take the ideal generated by this by its image in O x p. So, 
this quotient is the same as this all right as k vector spaces and uh, therefore if you count dimensions dimension of this minus dimension of this is equal to dimension of this so you will get you will get dimension of mp mod mp squared over k is equal to dimension of capital mp mod mp squared over k uh, minus dimension of ix plus mp squared by mp squared okay right and uh, but you know so so that will be equal to what is this this is n dimensional because we have already proved mp mod mp squared is isomorphic to m capital mp by capital mp squared is isomorphic to kn as vector spaces therefore its dimension because of the isomorphism psi prime its dimension is n so you see this is n okay minus this part is just the rank of the jacobian matrix at p so this is this as we have seen here is dimension of ix plus mp capital mp squared by capital mp squared is actually the image under psi prime dimension of the image under psi prime of that subspace okay and that is the rank of the jacobian so i will get n minus here i will get n minus rank of the jacobian of do fi by do xj at p i will get this okay and uh, what is uh, and 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 this is equal to n minus n minus dimension of x if and only if p of in, in as a point of x is non singular that is our definition of non singularity the definition of non singularity is that the rank of the jacobian should be equal to the co dimension for a point which is a smooth point a point which is a non singular point so this is equal to n minus n minus of dimension of x which is equal to dimension of x if and only if the point p is non singular so that proves the theorem so what you have proved is dimension of m mod m square mp mod mp squared where mp is the local ring uh, mp is unique maximal in the ideal in the local ring corresponding to the point p on the variety x that is equal to the dimension of x if and only if the point p is a smooth point okay and the importance of uh, the importance of that is that this gives this gives the tangent space at the point this gives you the dimension of the tangent space at that m mod m squared okay dimension of m mod m squared that actually gives you the tangent space at the point okay and therefore you are saying uh, a point is a smooth point if and only if the dimension of the tangent space is equal to the dimension of the variety on which it lies okay in general what will happen is the dimension if it is not a smooth point this dimension can go bigger you can get more tangent vectors your tangent space can become bigger if your tangent space becomes bigger then if you calculate the rank of this jacobian that will become smaller okay and the point will be a non singular point i mean the point will become a singular point okay so the moral of the story is that this this gives you the tangent space okay and this actually calculates the normal space this is a set of normal directions at that point in the ambient space in which this space is this 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 object is sitting inside okay so if the point is a smooth point and the y, x is an r dimensional variety in n dimensional space then the dimension of the tangent space will be exactly r the dimension of the normal space all the vectors which are perpendicular to the tangent space tangent vectors that will be n minus r and that should be equal to the rank of the jacobian for us any set of generators and that's what geometrically is happening and that's what it says okay so that finishes the proof of this theorem so uh, uh this uh so in this connection i need to tell you that uh the set of points where uh, uh the uh, uh where uh, the set of no singular points that's a closed subset 
okay. So that is also a fact that uh, can be seen immediately from this argument. If you look at all those points where you have uh, which are singular points see those are points on the variety where this rank falls rank of this matrix falls okay and you know where the rank of a matrix falls is just the rank is just given by the locus of the vanishing of the uh, uh, of, of all the minors okay of all the maximal minors right. So, if you have a, uh, if you take this Jacobian matrix okay it is a matrix uh, having uh, uh, polynomial entries all right and you know if you vary the point p what are the points p which are singular those are the points for which the if you ava evaluate the Jacobian matrix you are going to get rank less than you will not get rank uh, n minus r okay but you will get lesser rank okay and uh, what does that correspond to that corresponds to you take all the maximal uh, you take all the maximal minors square minus of the matrix their determinants should vanish if all the maximal square minus mat vanish at that point the rank has to fall and only at such points the rank will fall and therefore that is a closed subset okay. So, this argument tells you that if you look at all the points p which are singular points that is a closed subset of uh, x that will be a closed subset of x okay. So, the set of singular points is a closed subset but the more important fact is that this is this closed subset is by no means the whole space it can only be a proper closed subset which means it will be of smaller dimension and uh, that needs proof and I will prove it in the next lecture. <laughs>